welcome back to Total Warhammer 3 in part 14 of our Gore Rock SFO Grimhammer campaign. In today's episode, we are here with Big Kevin to be bringing the uh, Smackdown to Ulbrich. We were going to fight this one, but as I was seeing, it's a bunch of half health peasants. We are not going to go ahead and uh, we've already annihilated full health peasants several, several times here. So, poor old Ulbrich is going to get getting gotten rid of with the auto resolve. We're going to move on through. Ouch. What a nasty auto resolve for low casualties. Either way, we'll take the gold. And we are going to... Ooh, that's a tough call. I think I'm going to choose to sack the settlement, as we're going to be giving this over to Hexawaddle. Let's do some serious damage. And then we'll go ahead and turn around and claim this. So, Hammer and Anvil, outstanding personal courage and martial skill are not always enough. Today, Hammer became the Anvil. Or the, uh, Smash Planko Wood, because you can't get out physical prowess of Croxagor. Especially not Big Kevin. Scourge of Mankind, a shield of the Mirrored Pool. Free armor, 5 defense, and 10% spell resistance. That'll be nice when fighting against the uh, Dark Elves. Alright, well, we turn back around to claim the Monument of Izatol, completing the Claim Bretonia uh, quest there, and I'm actually tempted to go ahead and cause some instability here for... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. More instability for Mazdamoni to deal with. Treasury, treasury, and alignments. The Bordello Errant have been uh, wiped from the uh, face of the earth. Let's come on in here too. Mazdamundi really doesn't like us. What if I give you the monument of Izatal? Yes, quite. He would like a non-aggression pact. And I can take 14,000 gold from him as well. Well, don't mind if I do. If I have to get into a fight with Mazdamundi, I'd rather have all this gold. You can have the settlement. We'll be doing some trespassing now. We're in a kind of dangerous spot to be trespassing, but I think I think we'll survive. We're only mostly deteriorating now. See, as it stands, if he decides to declare war on us, Big Kevin can then deliver the, uh, the womp right to the side of the Monument of Izatol once more. So, uh, Lodge Kevin, you have unlocked the Dealer of Death, so more weapon strength for Croxagores in the army. Or the meat shield, so more resistance for Croxagores in the army. That's eight additional melee attack. We are going to be dealing some death, but before we do, because we don't actually have any Croxagores just yet. Alien instincts or the Abdurit till death. Five additional defense is pretty solid. Making him faster is probably not also a, a bad call. Let's go for. Uh, the obdurate till death, that way everyone around him is a bit more tanky, both uh, missile resistance and uh, melee defense-wise. 5% is a small amount, but it adds up. Awesome, he's gaining the Shield of the Mirror Pool. I think that's going to be better. The Trickster's Helm is going to be better than that. Well, let's come on down to Inzitep, who is fighting against Teach, though. You give him the Shield of the Mirror Pool. It'd be quite helpful against his enemies. He is an awesome-looking unit here. Be cool if we got more animations with her whirling this obsidian guillotine they've got attached to their tail around. Just super cool. Alright then, Big Kevin, you hold the line, and we are going to hopefully use all of this lovely gold to get some serious upgrades. So, Holotl, I'm going to go for uh, just the growth building. Upgrades the growth building and the woodcutter's shack here. Thankfully, the dwarves are kind of in the way over there, so that, that makes things nice and easy to defend. Sacred pools, we can upgrade the insect breeding form. And in it's a proper, we have all sorts of excellent buildings to get on in here. Starting with the emerald pools for 8,000. 100 medicinal plant bundles, 10 growth in all provinces, and then a 5% replenishment rate faction wide. Take five turns for that to go ahead and build on in. Also, come on in here and grab. Pools of Healing seems like a really good call. Drops global, but only in its uh, itself, though. So you almost want to have... Let's see how many provinces are actually bordering the River Curveza. We've got the Sacred Pools, the Guanji Valley, Mosquito Swamps, Headhunter's Jungle, and the Lost Valley. So that's a lot. We definitely will go ahead and slot in... Got both military buildings here. We are going to go for 
uh, the pools of healing. So 40 additional growth in adjacent provinces for the maxed out building here. Such a cool one. I'm tempted for the post battle loot as we can get up to 3% more and give us an extra Dread Saurian. But we may do that after we've got everything, all the growth sorted on out. So let's go ahead and throw in the pools of healing. We're going to be almost out of gold after those two additions. I think it's well worth it. We'll wait for the upgrade to the Ultra Horn. Rats, same thing down here in the Citadels. Star Tower, we could go for... Since we're making so much gold over here, I really don't want to decrease that in any way, shape, or form. All under Siege, extra defensive supplies. We could really make sure that this area remains defended. Or we could make sure the Sacrificial Altar of Sotex getting us some serious post-battle loot uh, gains. Let's go for a Shrine of the Old Ones. Decision has been made. Next turn, we'll have Gorok dive on out into this Skull Reef and have ourselves a fight against the Squidgy Pirates that are sloshing around out in the water. No more upgrades to be had. We are well and truly out of gold at this point. Ult of Sotek, though. We can come on in and grab an ally mission, hunting down Arwenel or Barodin. Let's just go for Barodin down here, as he is definitely someone we want to keep an eye on. I think we can come on into our ally screen here and, and find them anytime we want, even if they're not visible. I just will likely not remember. Over to our rights. It says one of them's available. I'm guessing that's finally the right of primeval glory. It's just letting us know it's it's ready to go. Such is the way. We just don't have enough gold for any of those. Honestly, we need none of them just yet. Let's come on up north with Big Kevin and see how things play out. Ah, see, now Mazda Mundi has come on down. Because he doesn't like the Big Kevins over here. Listen. We gave you that town. If I wished to take it from you, it would have already been done. We're going to scoot on back down here and prepare for a fight with Mazda Mundi, who is luckily rolling with a bunch of lizard skinks for now. Thankfully, we should be able to rip him apart. Before we do any more building, let's come on down to the Chosen One. Let's go see what's out in this... Uh, Skull Reef. It's no longer that 50k gold it used to. Pirate coves are some of the world's most elusive places, where the wealth of the local sea brigands is secretly kept and fiercely defended. It seems that today might be your lucky day. As your lookout, the crow's nest claims to have spotted one, a small island cave, next to a fleet of vampire pirates. It appears that there are zombie deckhands transferring treasure chests onto the ship right now. It's an opportunity for a big payday. These unliving sea dogs certainly won't give up their wealth too easily. Oh, indeed they shall. Raid the cove. There's a bunch of mortars and then a whole heap of luckily depth guard with dual axes. They're not going to be nearly as devastating to our front line. Let's go ahead and throw in the sun standard of Chotek on. So we're going to tip to stick this on Croak once more here. How many hand cannons do they have? Just the two pistol ears and the two actual hand, can hand cannon gun mobs. So... As long as we move quick, Clever Girl should have no trouble ripping them apart. Auto Resolve is going to give us a decisive victory with low casualties. Let's dive in and fight this one. We haven't fought too many vampires, and I would like to see them ripped asunder in battle. Alright, let's get to tearing apart these undead dogs. I would really like for my feral cold ones to be able to deploy Vanguard style, but they can't, so we shall deal. I think the best place to deploy them is just going to be off on the side here. We'll have all of them ready to charge on in towards the enemy. I don't think we can hide them in the woods. They're just not... Oh, we can indeed. Well, that changes things entirely. Sorry, AI. The clever girls shall be pouring out of the woods like demons. We can actually deploy him a little bit further back, Ichi Ouija. Come on. Let him... Drag them over. Perfect, they're all hiding. Except for one unit. We'll drag them on over, shove them in the woods, and uh, prepare the invasion. Sweet business. I'm gonna have Fluffy also hiding in the woods up here. I said hiding. In the woods. There we go. We'll have the Solar Cannon up front causing some problems, as he will be tough to do too much damage to even with those mortars. Fluffy's job is gonna be hunting down the giant crab, and we still have the flicker on the water. Well, I'm hoping this gets fixed soon. Um, let's go ahead and have 
Lethid Sora Spears. Kind of forming the gap here. And I would love to pull some of our Saurus back into the woods so they can kind of dive out and fight. Let's go we'll throw the Gorok's Fist on this side. And we'll just kind of we'll do a, a good old fashioned flank. Because we don't actually have any proper archers. Hot Rebarber up front. Gorok as well. Love that he's on a Carnosaur now. He's going to be much more dangerous. Well, a much bigger target for missile troops too, so keep in mind. Our dangerous chameleons, we'll have them hiding in the woods over here. They'll add the flammable weakness onto uh, Gorok's fist. And they should be able to rip through this side pretty quickly here. The intent, at least. Infantry, we'll have Chotex messengers rolling with them as well. And then... You know what? No, we'll have the missile troops together. Makes it easier. Broke Gorok. I'm going to pull the Carnosaur over a bit. Just to make the enemy a bit confused. He can close ground way faster than Gorok at this point. Beautiful. Pull these Saurus back a bit so they're not getting exploded by... By Mortifier there. And battle begin. Let's get going. Hola, skinks. One over here. Luffy, I'm gonna have to just pull into this bit of the woods. They will notice you pretty quick. If I can have you kind of scoot on up and blast some laser cannon shots at these pirates, that would be fantastic. Gorok, you're gonna come right up to the shallow water. And I'm gonna have the healer coming on over just to supply some heals. Perfect. Bring these swords well off to the side here. Same thing with the fist. Get ready to go. Make our line a bit more on Vex. Blinded Depth Guard are awesome to see. They are firing mortars at the proper targets, might I add. Alright, Grog, get over here closer to the heels. That way we can drop down the armor on them as well. Bold strategy. He's running on over straight into combat, which I'm not sure if I would I would be doing that. Oh, is that right? Spirit Leech on Gorok. We'll deal with this the old-fashioned way. Laser cannons keep ripping. Carnosaur, sprint on over. Let's, uh, let's deal some death. This poor mage. Nice shot, laser cannon. It'd be really hard to miss that one, but... The ultimate, yeah, he's almost gone already. Gorok, turn around. You've actually got incredible defenses to be throwing down with a big crab, who is also blind. Fluffy, come on out, start blasting some shots. Oh, Fluffy was helping out too. That's where all the damage was coming from. That makes a lot of sense. Go ahead and surround and destroy this big crab here. I'm going to pull the Carnosaur through the line. Make sure those guys are good and blinded. Perfect. They want to go up and over the mountain here to try to get us. No such luck. All right, time to send the Clever Girls out. Next, we are starting to get blasted by the enemy mortar line there. Awesome, they're going to phase on away. Stay kind of on the underside of this bit of land here, and we can charge on up into the gun mob. Give them some help. Ichiwichi's crew comes screaming on over. Let's lock the individual swords and send them into battle. We'll have Croak drop down the big bubble of nope on the guys that are already getting blown up. Oh yeah, the shotgun hurts. Pull them away. Even blinded, they're... Those blunderbusses do a solid amount of damage. Alright, we'll have you boys come up and start blasting this gun mob here. Dive into the fray. Alright, let's get you pulled, pulling on away from the guns and the depth guard. If you can even make it at this point. Go get the gun mob. Ride them down. Okay. 
We are still getting blasted out. I haven't used any of Croak's spells. Let's go ahead and come on in with the It's a Three. Keep layering on the boom. Korok is just untouchable. I've been fighting Death Guard the entire time. Death Guarded Giant Lobster. What are you going to do against Gorok? Absolutely nothing as he yows his way through the army. Here comes some more Death Guard though. Let's go ahead and switch their targeting. And we do get rear charge, which is a bit unfortunate, but we have all sorts of hits of boom to help out. Just blow these guys up here, because that's a bunch of Death Guard. Well done, lads. Let's surround this polar mob here. Oh, we did lose one of our clever girls as they got ripped apart by some Death Guard. That's all right. Our less casualties we probably would have taken. Your number of raptors. All right, not all of you were actually able to fight, so let's go ahead and pull some of them through in to help out with the Death Guard. You too there, Carnosaur. Should have kept a better eye on the, the heat-seeking missile troops, but such is the way. I think the last of the vampires should go ahead and crumble on away. Blood Knights or no? What do you guys have left? Well, this last group. And the Polar Mob gets run over. Sealing the deal for the Vampirates. No, 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 no. Don't blast our own Lover Girls. That's not good. Right, we secure a decisive victory, only losing 48, most of that being to the Clever Girls, and a few of our Saurus fell fighting against Death Guard, which is to be expected. We are going to go ahead and ooh, release those captives for a cool 2600. We go with our victory over the uh, Skull Reef, too. Ooh, Spirit of Tapak. Got our Beat Quaddle and the Colossodon Hunters. I think we've unlocked the rest of our Regiment Renowns. As well as some blessed cold ones. Spear Riders would be great. We're going to start kind of getting rid of the clever girls and replacing them with some proper controllable cavalry. So the Hidden Pirate Cove gave us 20,000 gold and a banner of swiftness. Awesome. We need all of the gold at this point since uh, most of our, our buildings are getting incredibly expensive. All of the landmark ones, for sure. We're going to keep upgrading Itza directly, so let's go ahead and increase the geomantic spire to, or the uh, web, the pylon up to the spire. These needle-like spires are constructed to maintain the flow of geomantic power, which we will soon be trying to disrupt with our one bow campaign. I can't wait. We'll also go ahead and grab a temple of the old ones so we can get our first skink oracle on in. A pretty devastating uh, hero. Very similar to the high elves kind of arc mage. We want to grab some spear ones here too for spear riders. He's also going to end up getting the cohort of Waddle. Get ourselves some uh, nasty power fist croxagores with armor sundering attacks, magical attacks, and armor piercing attacks. So anytime we'll rip the armor off, and any armor they do still have will go right through it. These guys just had the pursuit of battle naturally. Extra melee defense for Croxagore, who naturally have almost zero. Pretty great. You really want to keep the Croxagore moving on around. I do want to add those guys into Big Kevin's army, though, so let's come on in and see what he has to work with. I think we'll just get rid of one of these feral cold ones. Even our skinks are kind of performing pretty well. Nah, I changed my mind. Skinks are not necessary. We've got Croxagore. And we've got Saurus for the front line. So cohort of Quaddle, welcome on in. It's fist in time. Beautiful. And down here in the south, we'll also go ahead and grab a ROR unit for it's Imtep. Inzitep. An interesting combination of name that I'm probably mispronouncing. Oh, where's Baroden running I off to? The Raven God. You sure do. Raven God's got crystals all over the uh, southern shores here. Unfortunate, we are definitely going to have to launch an attack down here sooner rather than later. bellacor has got a rift going as well. Interesting. He might be fighting with Teach. Normally you see the bellacor rift open up by Drycha. 
We'll head into ourselves into the encamp stance, staying on the edge of our territory here. I'm gonna go ahead and start replacing a lot of these skinks. I think a total of four is more than enough. We can come on in here and grab. We got four clever girls as well. Let's go ahead and snag two chameleon skinks and then two of the. These guys have better stats. The chameleon stalkers. How about our red crests have frenzy and immunity to contact, which we're going to go ahead and uh, attempt to make good use of. I think we're also going to want some stalkers for this group, just as it'll be good to sneak around and, and fight the Dinchian and missile troops from behind. Because a lot of those demons do a ton of damage all at once. Really want to stop it before they arrive. Let's drop in a geomantic pylon down here in the southern sentinels next. Make sure the web is strengthening on up. I think we'll go ahead and grab the labor district as well. Yep. Quite like the idea. Korok, though, who should we turn? I'm thinking that we are going to have to deal with Mazda Mundi. It does look as though he is going to turn on us. We could come on over across the Great Pond and start doing some damage to Araby. Start clipping back the southern lands for uh, the Lizardmen. We basically, the Lizardmen lose most of the Southlands are pushed down into the jungles only. They, I think, are supposed to own most of the land here. Nehekarans and such cause all sorts of problems. Tough call. I just want to have him uh, patrolling the outside. There's another Skull Reef up here. That's where we're going to head then. Into March Stance. Let's zoom on up to... Honestly, is that contested? Vampire Coast is controlled, so we'll go up this way. This will also allow Itza some time to upgrade its uh, buildings and actually allow us to get some proper troops in on Gorok's force. Sweet. Throw in the meat storage hall there. And then the Croxagore Labor District here. And I think that's going to be about all we can get to for this turn, so let's jump into our diplomacy. Yeah, it looks as though Mazdamundi is likely going to be declaring on us. He is dealing with a lot from the Dark Elves, so he should be careful he doesn't overextend. Speak! And no real deals to be had for now. And that is fine. We will zoom on back up to Big Kevin. And then we shall end the turn. Well, hello, Beanpole. He would like a peace treaty. Uh, no. That would not be wise at the moment. In fact, I think Mazda Mooney's about to try to betray us. I'm gonna go ahead and pull Big Kevin out, throw him into an ambush stance, and see what Mazda Mundizzle tries. I'm almost positive that Kevin can handle him in a straight up one on one fight. We don't get to see what Mazda Mundi's melee skills are right now, but we could easily hunt down the Skink Chief and then turn and go after Mundi himself. We also have Dawi allies that we could be bringing on into the fight. Right then, Rock. Skill points we didn't give you last turn. Let's go ahead and give you Foe Seeker. Keep working on over here towards the Deadly Onslaught. Hot for Barber, I am going to go ahead and give you the Forward Scout now. Immune with Beast gives him a nice bonus for Slarge. So let's initially give him an extra 5% Missile Resist and a Vanguard Deploy. Cat just jumped on the desk. Shoo shoo, Gray. There's Battle of Foot. We're going to march, and we'll go ahead and zoom on all the way. Oh, we would have to take some attrition. Out to the edge of our, our lands here, then. Well done. It's sad that these guys are the ones that are. Can't combine them with any of the others. Yeah, it's not how it's going to work. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and kick out these gold chevron clever girls. Here we can recruit since we're in our territory. This is controlled. 
we might be able to next turn just because we're in in march though there's no recruitment oh while at sea oh well, there wasn't a problem with us being at sea before that's all right learned that lesson the hard way Alana is moving up a tier. Let's go ahead and do the same uh, with Longsla. Try to entice Mazdamundi into attacking, if that is indeed his plan. Down here in the south, I think we are just due to uh, save some gold. Recruiting some more soldiers, of course. Grab our chameleon stalkers. And then we can give them the blessed spawning of the spear riders as well. Looks like we have secured Lustria, but that doesn't mean that they aren't building up down here. There's obviously an army sitting and waiting in the shadows there, just outside of our point of view. Protect Speed for those deals. Come on down to Big Kevin, and we will end the old turn. Big Kevin's ambush was foiled. But how? A thousand miles have been wiped out. Hopefully, Tehenowin stays on our side. That's one thing I am a bit concerned about. He is deteriorating as well. Let's hunt Skaven together. Here, how about I give you a gift? Small gift of 1400. Enjoy. Karangani. We do need at least one of you on side. I can fight Hexwaddle. I'd rather not get invaded by Tehenowin on the side. Oh, a small tribute on over to the Redcrest. I think we would be trespassing. I have heard tales of your kind. Please I speak. Threaten you. We need all of the gold we have currently. We're about to gain a whole heap more from this Skull Reef, though, so let's go ahead and do this now. The As military access with the Citadel of Dusk. Perfect. That allows us to kind of pull down into their land. Can't quite afford. Spear riders are pretty expensive. 2400. Jump into ambush. We'll come on down below the Dusk Peaks. See if we can't locate any Zichian aggressors here. Nothing on off the coast either, which is a bit sad. The council is disappointed. Uh, looks like Rel actually has a proper army. No, you failed, failed. We'll have to see how well this performs in a battle against Oixel. I think they can hold. Simply because we have towers and tower walls. But without those, we'd have a huge issue. Alright then, Big Kevin. 90% ambush chance. Come on now. Don't fail me again. Onward to the Skull Reef. This one will give the auto-resolve. Pirate Coves are some of the world's most elusive places, and we shall raid them. We're on a pirate hunt. Decisive victory with low casualties? Awesome. Sorry, Pete. We'll see you later. 168 of our own have fallen, and we shall go ahead and release this lot as well. Dragonfly of Quicksilver. Vanguard deployment. Simple, but very powerful. Oh, excellent. Let's come on into the Pox Marsh. We can grab Gorok, a few of his blessed cavalry spawnings there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in. The lesser number is always the one that gets added to, so let's just combine these two up. Like so. We've got two new add-ins. We'll grab the Blessed Cold One Spear Riders. Grab both of them. Let's take a look and see what kind of upgrades we can get for them. We've got the Sotek spawning, which gives them acceleration, charge speed, charge bonus, and the lethal poison. Sotek is flame attacks, burnt resistance, and missile resistance. And then Tsunki is more speed, more melee defense, and the Frostbite Augment. I actually think the Blessed Spawning of Sotek is going to be best for both of them. Lethal Poison applied. And more Acceleration, Charge Speed, and Charge Bonus for Cavalry. Yes, please. We're going to grab both of them. 
spawning of Sotek. That is awesome. I think I would also like to get in the Colossodon Hunters of Korok's Force, as we do need a flying unit to be a, a bit of a menace. These guys are pretty much the best ones. Let's go ahead and get rid of these Feral Cold ones here. I don't trust that if we try to merge them up, we'll lose our Gold Chevron. They're all going to go away eventually, but throw in the Colossodon Hunters. I've got a pretty terrifying force. We're going to come on out of the Pox Marsh. That way we're able to get closer to the shipwreck here. Lord Croak's still working towards the Secrets of Chaos. We're almost there. I think the next one that we would like. Global Recruitment plus one. I'm thinking that's the call. We are, I think, simply one point away from grabbing extra melee attack plus 50 while fighting against Warriors of Chaos. Which we are about to reach, Finch, and that is going to be so incredibly useful. Let's grab the Inspiring Presence for our Old Blood here. And if you have any name suggestions for any of our lords that aren't currently with a name, such as Big Kevin, or our, like, our Source Old Blood down here in the south, go ahead and put those in the description. I'll comments obviously and we'll add yes, that on in in the next episode Inzitep is an interesting name but I think you all can come up with something a bit better We've got 18,000 gold let's see what we can spend it on mangrove coast going up to the next tier is probably a good call although the sentinels has all sorts of good buildings that we can grab too take wixel up to tier four and here it's so uh, we can go for another upgrade on the corral arena Give us some H.S. Stegodons and the Engine of the God variant as well. Dropping down some laser beams from space. This is Lawn. I'm going to ignore Tloxlon and go for Bragone. Get our coastal settlements all well defended from any kind of threats from abroad. Who knows when Noctilus might decide to come on over to our neck of the woods. One more Scarvet in, and we get one more Oracle. Or we don't have any don't have any buildings for the Oracles, but we can get another Scarvet. Let's do that here in Itza and send them up north. Uh, we just simply don't have enough gold. Leader of his kind. Well, Gecko, you were basically perfect for Gorok's army. 4% upkeep reduction for Saurus, 5% more resistance. That's perfect. Dino Rider, more movement range. Man, these guys are both better than our, our current uh, Old Blood. Was he? What does he have going on? Starvet. He's just strong. Armor, attack, and strength. Which, very fair enough. He's got gold for days. Let's give you the... Well, you already have Vanguard deploy, so the Dragonfly of Quicksilver is not actually useful. Hibernation attendant for more replenishment rate. And we can give the Quicksilver Dragonfly to you, good sir. Awesome looking unit. I really want one of these maces too for the wall. The collection of weapons that I would like to acquire continues to increase. Let's go ahead and upgrade the Blood Swamps. We can get another growth building on in. Lord not moved. Sheer audacity. You leave Big Kevin alone. He's trying to ambush. He's gonna throw off his groove. You know, it's not that I don't trust Mazdamon Dizzle, but I definitely don't. Orion is gonna go ahead and take a nappy nap. And Oixel is finally besieged. Let's see what the rats have. Sequence of armor crafting. Gold, found in abundance in Lustria, is used to fashion exquisite armor. Cover those parts of the Lizardmen's tough scales do not. Soft tummies. They like scratches. You dare attack the city of Oixel. Leave, rats. Consider yourselves banished once more. Let's go ahead and take the extermination here. As we once again take from the peasants. The rebellions are so, so fruitful. Gorok, time to auto-resolve some more vampires. Hoping we can get ourselves into a fight with some chaos forces, but it may not be the case. We'll sail to the wreck. 
and a Benjamin Barnacle Beard. You're just missing there, fella. Eliminate them post haste. We're gonna go ahead and take the extermination this time for the research rate. 5,000 treasury, 1,500 more bonus experience. Incredible. Let's go ahead and have Gorok go into March now. We can start zooming back down the coast towards our main uh, recruitment hub here. So we would need to move into Etz at the very least. Fastest way to do that, I think, is through the Blood Swamp. So that's the way to go. I would love for Croak to gain another skill point, but it is not the way. Speed. Nay, we'll come on in here and give him. Well, I guess speaking of more speed, 7% more speed. We'll go for both of these two speed options, and we'll come on up to the Agility of the Lizard to kind of boost that as much as we can. Faster Gorok can move, the more dangerous he is to enemy lords. Honored Elder gives him some ward save and more control. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. We definitely need to get you some more talismans and enchanted items. You have earned them. 16 more turns for another bit of growth points. So we're going to go ahead and come on into the Pox Marsh then and max out our Plyodon landing and the kilns. All 3,000. Here it is. Uh, we have. We do have slotted in the Temple Guard Barracks now. Excellent. It is time to start replacing our Saurus with uh, Temple Guard. We get a Priest, too. He's going to go up and join Big Kevin. Kellard. Or Zlatota. Get one of your Heavens or Beasts. Blood Frenzy. Speed. Armor Piercing Damage. Vigor per second. Compromising or determined. I actually think we want Kalard the uncompromising here. We're gonna have a beast skink priest, uh, priest join up with uh, the Croxagore, as it seems like that'd be what would empower them the most. Although, man, the Priests of Heavens are much more powerful. Let's do Heavens. We're gonna grab the Bramach the Arrogant. Self important and opinionated. Ooh, just like me. Alright, Bramach. You are gonna be joining up with. The lad in the north here. I think I realize I got the oracle mixed up with the other one. Unless they've changed you a little bit here in SFO. No, this is exactly what I was... I, I got them mixed up myself. That's a good deal of extra retinue skills, though. I was thinking this is the one that rides upon the... Uh, what are they called? The blind poison-spitting dinosaurs. Find them here in my building browser. I'm guessing the Oracle. I figured that was the Oracle. Oh, you know what? I said Skeet Priest, not the Oracle, didn't I? Indeed. So we got a Priest of Heavens. I wanted to recruit in an Oracle. We can't do that just yet. But having a another spellcaster is not a bad idea. But you only get one Thought we had access to another chief. Guess not. Wait, where did our... Where did our perfect Saurus go? Oh, no. Where were we recruiting him in at? Was it down here? In the, no, it's definitely up there in the north. Oh, how sad. That was literally the perfect Saurus. Yeah, forget this perfect spawn, fella. Not nearly as good. Regeneration is, is fairly fantastic. Let's go ahead and grab the arrogant lad here. Blood Frenzy is pretty solid. We'll have him go down south and help out. Gain in all of our new heroes. Let's grab spread control. And then training. Let's grab your passive skills to start. We even probably go ahead and recruit in. We're all good to go there. For the wisdom of the way. Business. Take Jottle up to its final tier there. And we hang out. Big Kevin, let's go ahead and switch sides once more here. We might go ahead and declare we're on Mazda Mundi ourselves. 
We do still have deals with him. And he is finally starting to improve. We had to kind of hang out and watch really closely. If he decided to get froggy, he would have had a really bad day. I think with that change, I'm happy that he did decide to. We're going to come on back over to a lotl with uh, Big Kevin here. But I'm not going to do it yet. Make sure that Mazda Moody, because he is still very negative at the moment. Like, could turn into war kind of on a whim. Not worthy to stand before him. But he does have cold blooded logic, and since I'm so much more powerful, hopefully that will dissuade him from attacking. We shall soon see, though. Down in the deep south, where are. Can we see where our enemies are through here? He's moving over to attack the Southlands, which is probably something we should do as well. Try to snatch up some land before it's too late. Rather to Hannah wouldn't go and fight in the wasteland climate here. We'll stay and be the defense that we should be. Uh, you come across. I've got an ambush chance here. Come back over to the Dust Peaks. Perfect. Go ahead in the turn. Alright, our poor Saurus is not all that good at ambushing. That's, that's just fine. We can move all the way over to Ketza as I would like to, which is perfect. Can we do so in normal stance? The answer is no. I'm fine with going to march. Mock, you come on up north and help out Big Kevin, even though you're not the Oracle I thought you were. You'll do fine until we have an Oracle down in that army. And Ball here. You come on down south. Get ourselves the Hero Core actually running on around. We've got 4,000 gold still kind of flowing our way, which is perfect. Pearl pools are in. Pools of healing are in too. Great. We wait just for two more turns. That unlocks the Oracle finally there. Okay. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just wait and grab the guard barracks then. Who are we going to replace them with? Is the only question. Interesting question, too. I think we'll just get rid of the normal source warriors, even though these guys are gold chevron kind of maxed here. And that's that's a that's a painful call. Here's what we're gonna do instead. That's how we're gonna recruit up another lord. Yeah, source old blood as well as we are rolling with Gorok. We should have a lots of source old bloods kind of leading the armies until we start awakening a uh, more salon. So for now we'll grab a Shakur, hopefully the master survivor. N5 the aggressive. Now let's go for the Master Survivor. Alone in the jungles of Lustria for many years, he watches. Extra experience per turn and more hit points. And Kor here can take some of these soldiers off of Korok. We're going to go ahead and give him... Keep the Blessed, the blessed Saurus Warriors. But I'm going to take Shield Variant. And then I'm going to go ahead and take... I think both of the Tsunki variant. We'll replace them with three Temple Guard. Well, you know, we can just replace all of the Spears with Temple Guard. They lose then the extra benefits from the Blessed spawning, but that can go over here to Shakur. Let's do that next turn, though, because uh, Gorok has all sorts of extra upkeep mm, reduction for Saurus. Usually paying 138 for them. And Shakur would pay much more. 199, which is still more than I would like to. We're able to recruit in only four Temple Guards. We have to keep that in mind. Yeah, so it's basically just all four of the Sora Spears are going to be replaced. Which works for me. It's a stink tech. It's a stink tech. Do you think I would like to recruit in or build on in one of the stone markers in Flonksla? Getting gold right away with the favelas is probably not a bad idea either. 
297 gold at the moment. As opposed to just a 50 gold research rate. That's the one we're going for. Stone marker. All quiet on the Lestrian front. We'll just have you jump in the Astromancy stance. Kind of come hang out. Watch. This will, the next turn, he should have a lot more line of sight, so he should kind of balloon out. Keep an eye on the coast here. Perfect. Jump into diplomacy real fast. Defender of the Ever Queen. Defensive Welcome. alliance with Melwyn. Time is Absolutely. Precious, so please make your request. We need your archers, sir. Most astute. As long as you know. Shotsy. Nothing else but the Sisters of Avalorn being added into Gorok's army would make him quite the powerhouse. Not that he really needed the help. Blood Swamps, we're going to go ahead and just chuck in the extra growth building so we can get Slamwa Peck moving as quickly as we can. And yeah, Big Kevin, I think it's going to be time that we move through Tlonxla. After this, we're going to march and go down over to Wall Bottle as quick as we can. Perfect. Dusk is now building themselves an outpost. Where at? Alter the Horned Rat? Well, that's just fine. We'll have ourselves some uh, lovely piles now defending. I think you just get a unit of spearmen and a unit of archers with a light armor, which is... That's eh, just fine. Looks like Lorelei is going for an invasion of the Southern Wastes. Very bold. Look, I like to get on that as, in on that as well. Is there a port city here? Mount Athul is being built up. Let's go ahead and destroy it. Do we have military access with you? The answer's a delicate maybe. Delicate, delicate maybe. All right, Gorok, let's go ahead and switch some of these troops on over now. Let's go into Astromancy Stance. We're not paying as much. We'll just give him all of these spears. Gorok himself will come on in and grab all of the Temple Guard. Cavalry Bane, Armor Piercing, Anti Large, and all sorts of other goodies. Watchful Stand. So, the first bit of melee, they have less speed, less charge speed, but they have even more bonus V Large and melee defense for a full 30 seconds, which is awesome. They're going to be disciplined. So, if something happens and we lose either Gorok or one of the other heroes, they will not have a leadership penalty. Also, great. Yep, they're fantastic. Temple Guard it is. We can afford only three of them, though. Such is the way, Shakur. We are going to bring you. I think it's best to come on up north. We've got this portion really well locked down. Hinawen is going over to invade uh, Araby. We'll go ahead and come up into Mark and sprint up to the edge of our territory. Staying in Itza will keep our heat upkeep reduction on, so that'll be great. Make any more money through deals. I haven't met Cult of Pleasure, otherwise I would declare war on them immediately. Prince of Elfwan. Just fighting Teach. No more gold we can siphon off of anyone. So only three Temple Guard will be added in this turn here. We're going to be a little bit off with our recruitment. Alright, Big Kevin, we can probably trust Mazdamundi. A bit of march. Come on over here to Willano. Quickly, quickly. Long slow, we will throw in. All of these we're going to throw in the stone markers when we're able. Perfect. Like the same thing here at Burgone. So we'll go ahead and end the turn, and then we'll go ahead and end the episode as yeah. Over here to Gorok. And the turn. As I speak, we turned around and he came and attacked, didn't he? Always ended his non-aggression pact. Alright, Mazdaman Dizzle. Alright, Rebellion in the Jungle of Webs. It is the Awakened. Actually, it's a pretty scary force. That's not good. 
We've also got one of the sacred pools, which I guess immediately disappeared. It looks like they just completely disappeared. Speaking of, in the blood swamps, these Skaven have been snatching fools up. All right, Shakur, you need to move quick. As it does look like Mazdamundi is about to, to uh, betray us. He has a lot to worry about, but I guess not. In that case, Big Kevin, you are going to turn back around here. Stay in March, jumping into uh, Tlongsla. We've got reinforcements on the way. We can actually slot in the spirit of Tupac if we really wanted to. What we're going to do is quickly come on in. Gorok, give him the last unit of Temple Guard. And wait for them to go ahead and recruit. Beautiful stuff. Well, with that, I'm going to be out of time for today. I've been a Space Wizard Total War. Remember to leave a like for the light god and a sub for the sub thon. I'll see you on the next one.